Hey guys, Jarvis here with It's Not Junk TV. Just left one of the most packed estate sales I've been to in years. Uh, dug through the attics, dug through the basements, dug, 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 dug. Uh, I want to say I got there probably about 9.40, started at 10. Of course, they was already letting people dig, so anything I missed in that few minutes that they were letting people in there, I ended up with a pile of stuff, got some boxes to go through, the family really didn't want me recording there. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to get some more footage of as I dig, but uh, like I say, like I said in the previous video, for some reason you pull out a camera and they see a camera, then they, uh, they want to charge more money or they might ask you to stop recording. So, I don't, I wasn't able to get no footage there, but we get back home dig through this stuff and I'll show you what I got. Alright, I'm back home after uh, about four, four and a half hours of rummaging through probably the dirtiest estate sale of the year anyway. I won't say of the of my career, but of the year. Yes, uh, it was very dirty. Uh, the mice had taken over some time ago. So, this is what we ended up finding and then we'll go through it and see what we really found. Uh, didn't dig much for four and a half hours. Uh, I'm going to do it here, right at my kitchen table. Because, you know, I don't want to take this dirty stuff into my living room with the carpet and whatnot. And here I can go through it and I can go right back outside. So, let's see what we ended up with. There's a couple little boxes to go through. Some just cool stuff that I like when I seen it. But let's see what we got here. Alright, so I wish I'd have had a pair of these when we were at when I was at the sale. But since I'm back here and I had access to them, I am gonna throw them on. Not that everything is uh contaminated, but everything's kind of dirty. Um, believe it or not, you can't cl clean paper goods, so I've had pretty good luck. There's a process. Uh, this is a World War II era atlas. Um, kind of gives you ships and different enemy planes and vessels and whatnot. It's kind of neat. I've had them before in the past. Uh, not super rare. I think they give them out to almost every kid in school uh, at that time frame. Uh, these I picked up. I found a couple of different packs of these. They're solid fuel sticks for hand warmers, the old school hand warmers. You can also use them, I'm pretty sure, in the little steam engine. Um, heat source for the little model steam engines. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. May be different. Uh, but I found two boxes of them brand new. I don't know. I'm weird about that stuff, so I kind of picked it up. I thought it was neat, and then it still had its original box. Uh, You've probably seen this when I was scanning over any of these old block planes. I try to pick up. I didn't really notice that the top of the handle was kind of broke off. But the blades there, I didn't see a name on it. Uh, I would probably say this was late 1800s, more than likely. So if anybody out there knows or seen this model, I don't see Stanley on it anywhere. So it might be something. It is a Stanley. Wow. I wish I could see that. Alright. It's a Stanley number 29. That was easy enough. I just need to remember where to look for that stuff. So right out there on the front. Uh, not in super bad shape. I mean, it's not all gouged up. I'm pretty sure that could be restored. Probably have to throw a new handle on it. But the blade's there. I don't know. That may, I'm considering I'd I've kind of noticed on whatnot that there's not too many antique tool sales or auctions, so I'm thinking I, I may introduce that onto whatnot if it's allowed. I've not really checked yet. Uh, but it is a, a brief idea I had. Uh, this, I don't think it's a name brand, but it was complete. Impact drivers. They come in handy if anybody, if you're ever working on anything. 
got the big heavier Phillips type. This is for moving stuck bolt uh, screws. Flat Phillips. But it looks like one, if you're old like me, you would remember a company called uh, J.C. Whitney. And back in the day, because my father had probably 15 sets of these sitting around, um, when you ordered so much, you got a free gift. And usually it was one of them impact drivers. Every time. They ne it's like they never kept kept up with what they were actually sending you. Uh, cool little advertising piece. I just thought it was neat. Hans Manville painting. That's like a weather stripping kit. I don't know. That kind of stuff. I always tend to pick up because anything advertising people tend to like. Uh, we'll go through that in a second because we're going to have to do a little bit of a change. A couple more block planes. This is a keen cutter. Pretty good bed on it. Not real rusted up. Handle's not broke. I don't know about the, I know about King Cutter and their other type of tools, but I, don't, I can't say I've dealt with too many of their planes. I think that's a little Stanley. Yeah, it just says Made in USA. I don't see Stanley on it. It's still got the wood shavings in it from somebody using it. I was trying to get the blade out. If you can look at them, most of the time the blade will have, this one's just tight. And I'm not messing with it all day. But it's still in good shape. It's Japaning, Japaning, I guess that's what that's called. It's still in pretty good shape. The blade's not all nicked up. And I always do pretty good well with that kind of thing. Uh, here's one for you. I picked this up, had no clue. It may be some kind of antique carpet stretcher is maybe what I thought it was. But I'm gonna leave this one because I have no clue. I'm not just going to ask you to comment because I do want you to comment. Can you tell me what that is? I think it's some kind of carpet stretcher, maybe. We got the little jaws there, the little teeth there, a couple of them bent, teeth here. It's definitely for getting leverage on something, but I'm not sure, sure what you would be leveraging. No markings on it. It looked old. Maybe there is something on it. I always say that and then I find something. <laughs> Patent June 13th, 1876. So, whatever it is, it's old. I bet you it is some kind of weird carpet stretcher. Is this a grip? It looked like they were all bent down at one point. I don't know. You know what it is. Drop it in the comments below. Tell me what it is. If that's what, if I'm right, close, maybe for something totally different. Who knows? But it does have an old patent date on it. sharpening stone the round ones I'm pretty sure these are for axes most of the round puck style that I've ever seen have been for axe it's a two a two grit so heavier on one light on the other no markings of course because none of these ever are they had one little nick in it right there another net and it's in pretty good shape so that was a no-brainer I had to pick that up even if I don't tend to decide to sell it Now, the stuff in this crate, uh, the garage was a little worse for wear. Uh, the animals had been to it. This brand new craftsman chisel set that the animals have got to. I don't know that them handles will clean up. It's kind of a shame. It was brand new and just got left amongst the stuff. The blades I know I can clean up, but these plastic handles, once that mold sets in on them, they usually don't. Don't like to come back, and I'm not setting them on the blanket. That's pretty nasty. Uh, I'm not sure what this was. I seen it and thought it was neat. 
I don't know, some kid's little trinket lock box. But it's got a little padlock that runs through it, runs through this bar, which I assume holds this lid on. There's nothing in it, it's empty. I poked around that in there when I first picked it up. But I'm not sure if it was an old key box, because it's got a hole. If this was a hide a key kind of thing from back in the day, or somebody made it. I don't know. I threw it in a pile of stuff. I'm not going to say it isn't marked, because as soon as I say that, I'll find it. But, I don't know. It was just something, something interesting that was down there. And I assume after these people had a sale a few times, they, they were talking like they were already getting to the point of being frustrated with it and didn't want to do it anymore. So I would assume a lot of this stuff is going to end up in the back of Scrapper's truck. Now, of course, I left my name and number so I could be that Scrapper to drag it out of there, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> little light gauge railroad track. Most of the time, these end up being used as little ambles. Uh, this one was cut well, so it wasn't just hacked with a torch. So it may have been, a lot of times they gave these away as like awards. <laughs> well, here's your little piece of railroad track. You did a good job. I'm not sure, but that did happen. I've seen them with little plaques and stuff on them. Now this is cool. It's got a tag, but I can't make it out. And there's a little five pound amble. Now that's probably no casting marks in it. There was a sticker right there. And I'd have to see. See if it rings. I don't know if it's that ringing or if it's that ringing. But the jewelers size amble. You can probably do knives on it. It's about big enough to do that, do small bladed knives. But just a neat little anvil. I'm going to clean it up. That'll end up on our eBay store more than likely. Uh, last couple smaller jewelers anvils I've gotten, that's where I tend to have the best luck with them. Everything's so dirty. <laughs> Why I got this, I'm not sure. A wall can, snowmobile, Castrol, high performance snowmobile oil. I, there's quite a few snowmobiles around here and I'm not sure why we, I don't remember ever being enough snow for a snowmobile, but they was one there. I could have bought a really old one for less than a hundred bucks. They was just begging somebody to take it, but I don't need no other yard ornaments. Not really. First little box of stuff. Let me zoom in. Or... Trying to get rid of the trash. And the pipe tobacco too. It's perfection. even playing that game. Uh, well, uh, well, stuff like that don't normally happen here, but I guess you get the camera out and it does. Uh, this little tin just got some glazers points in it. I grabbed this whole little box mainly for that little hammer right there. <laughs> no, not really. The little hammer was neat, but there's a lot of brass. Old brass fittings in here. I don't know why I grab brass, because then, I don't know, I look at it, and I say, uh, well, I hate to scrap it because they're never going to make that again. I don't know what that fitting would have been for. I've never seen that type of fitting before, but then there's, 
I think we may have drugged something in with this batch of stuff. This house is making noises and the games are playing by themselves and somebody don't like it. These look like brand new antique curtain rod holders with the screws and everything. I think that's what they are. Some kind of little, some kind of little bracket. But it looks like it would be to me to hold a rod of some sorts. But there's a bunch of them, brand new. There's a lot more in this. I didn't know what was in them. I just grabbed a few. More brass. Antique padlock. It looked like it took some kind of key. I don't know. I grabbed locks because I've got a pile of them somewhere here. I just need to find them and put them all in one, one spot. And we'll put them out on an auction at some point. But like I say, the brass I got because mainly I'm going to end up scrapping it. But, you know, there's two or three pounds of yellow brass, clean yellow brass. There's something else in yellow brass. <coughs> and so, you know, there's a bunch of them in here. Chisel blade. Files. for some use of some purpose of some kind that no longer exists probably but a couple more files so typical stuff that you find in a cigar box in a barn like, but mainly scrap now for some reason hanging off that spring was a uh, pretty early cast iron plumb bob uh, if you see the cast iron ones grab them because they got pretty good collectability I collect them. There's a, a lead one or some kind of lead weight that they used as a plumb bob, but it sort of looks like they somebody's made them one at some point. So I grabbed that pair of old school, I assume metal shears, old metal nippers, is what they look like. Just a hodgepodge of stiff. Like I say, I dug, I was in attics, I was in basements, I was in crawl spaces, I went above the, in the rafters, in the garage. Uh, they told me, of course, I could. They told me to have at it because nobody had been up there yet. And, of course, they told me that, and I was like, well, I've got to go up there. Um, just more brass, big brass pieces. Uh, towards the end, I just started grabbing boxing up anything that was brass. I figured it was best to hold on to it. Uh, here's something I've not seen in a while. This was buried in a drawer in the garage. These are so you can make your own uh, spark plugs. These are the ends and the connectors. So I figured that could be handy. I'm always working on small engines, small motors. And you can repair one as long as you just broke the end off of it. I, I've had a little bit of success doing it and it in 100%, but it might get you home. But like I say, I haven't seen one of those kits in a long, long time. Some more stuff that fell out of that little box, one of them little Stanley line levels from so long ago. And BBs. Not like any of that kind of stuff. Typical guy stuff. And that's all this mainly was. There, there was some stuff in the house, but I, I ended up getting two things out of the house. Uh, to be honest with you, the smell had been permeated through it from animals living indoors. And so trying to bring anything out of there just wasn't going to work. Uh, very early file handle. Anytime you see the skeletonized, that's typically... 1870s to 1890s and then they kind of changed after that but they're just an interchangeable file handle but look for the skeletonized ones they tend to bring they do a little better than others wizard wrench the only reason I got it I've got a ton of these type of adjustable wrenches uh, but because it was made by wizard was the reason I grabbed it odd little hammer head 
and I actually found a bunch of those all brand new just like that one I got two or three um, some sort of brands or stamps there's one two three four is this what you're mad about um, I don't know if they're I don't know they're, they're not for branding animals there's no way they're too flimsy they would never hold up I don't know if they're I don't know what they're for again here's another one they're just aluminum got just a simple wire handle on them but does anybody know out there what these really are are they some kind of brand are they for stamping concrete are they for something like that I don't know let me know I, I, I've seen a lot of things but sometimes you just see stuff and you're like Meh, I don't know I know it's not for branding animals I'm pretty sure about that box again this is this is going to be kind of like this one this is where I started grabbing scrap Essex big old valve of some sort some kind of air valve is what it looks like but it's solid brass I mean I figured as the, the prices they were given I looked about you know there's no way I could this little box here probably weighs 15 pounds that's solid brass this has been a nickel plated brass. I mean, so there's nothing in here. Some door stops, some vintage hardware. I know, see, I told you, there's another one of those, but that one, this one actually had a handle on it at one time. There's two of them, little funky handles. More brass valves, pipe. Like I said, I didn't even really look. I just seen, seen brass. That's all I was going for here, was thinking scrap. And that's pretty much all of this is just some scrap and brass is one of those things you can stockpile it doesn't hurt to keep it around I don't think anyway well that's done uh, glazers points the last time I looked for some of these I couldn't find any so these I kind of grabbed just for mine I, know I don't do many but I've got one uh, one property I take care of that's got old windows like that in it, and when I gotta change something there, I need glazers points. I needed some a while back and had to try to re reuse some, and it wasn't fun. Uh, vintage tax is something else I grabbed. If anything, they're great display pieces. The boxes are cool on them. Um, you know, you, you a lot of this stuff you don't have to think of it in terms of is somebody gonna use it. Somebody may use it as a a backdrop for you know a movie or a TV show or a play or something like that so you know you're not always selling to a, a collector I have no idea what this is it was just in the back uh, it's something about sticking this to the end of a soldering iron maybe I don't know I don't know that was new and pack and mixed in with all this stuff and it doesn't have a barcode so that that ages it considerably uh, I don't have all of this. I couldn't find the rest of it because apparently there's more to it. The rest of the plane, but this is a Stanley plane number 45. The side handle and the blades for it. So, even though it's not all there, somebody, I know that's a pretty popular plane. So, somebody out there is looking for this little set of blades to go with theirs. And even this, I, there may have been the guide. I know this thing rides on rods as a guide to set your depth, and I, that may have been there. But there was so much stuff I got distracted and just forgot and didn't go back and get it. But it is what it is. It's still a cool piece, and I'm glad I was able to drag it out of there and save it. Ah, there's another miscellaneous blade. I don't think that went in that kit, but I think it's the same type of thing. A two, a two profile draw plane for doing, excuse me, for doing trim. It does a concave and a flat, so you can do like a, seem like a crown molding to me. But again, that's, I've never seen one. I've never seen one like that before. Usually it's one blade, it could be concave, it could be straight, but I've never seen a two shaped draw knife before. <clears throat> Grabs, my brass grabs. Can't 
antique copper drawer pulls. Kind of recessed drawer pulls. I grabbed them. I, them I had some more of them little brass valves. For some reason I find them everywhere. Catches and latches that would have been on old furniture. Wall plates for door handles. Stuff like that. Just miscellaneous things. Early, uh, these were the latch, the secondary door on a set of French doors. That would have been your up top latch, but they're all made out of copper, it looks like. That's all of that one. We've got a few more things here. Mainly. Now, those books that was stored in another part of the garage. Grey's Anatomy, which I thought was just a TV show, but apparently it was a whole book. Uh, which is about, which I, that totally makes sense now. Dirty uh, dirt. Black's Law Dictionary. Um, these are interesting. If you ever have an opportunity, get you one of these and look up what human is and what they call a human. That's all I'll say about it, but... Check it out, it'll be in, it'll, you'll find it interesting what the court system and what your government thinks you are as a human. That I thought was pretty good, pretty cool. They say these are in another little storage shed and I didn't see any mice. There's no damage around the edges, no urine stains or anything like that in them. I didn't, I mean, they're smelling like old books. Uh... That's all we got in that one. And the last piece, well, actually second to last piece, this little sewing machine. Now these two pieces come out of the house, so I've already brought them in and cleaned them up and, and got the smell off of them. This little German-made child's sewing machine. Pretty neat, little needle. Looks like it takes a couple batteries, battery powered. Probably from the 50s or 60s. Really well made. Got the little foot that comes up. But like I say, I already had to clean that up. I wanted to see what it looked like, and it it done pretty well. Here's a set of Roseville um, candlestick holders. Uh, got the models and numbers and stuff on them. Tell you which ones they are. These were so coated in fur and dust and whatnot, you really couldn't see. So I don't think anybody bothered to pick them up because of how gross they looked. So nobody's seen that they were Roseville. And I think I ended up giving a dollar or something for the pair of them. So, nothing really, but they uh, they got a little bit of resale. Roseville used to do really well, but that's kind of that's kind of died off. And this I picked up. I don't know if it's going to be for sale. It's extremely dirty, so i got to be careful here. These were huge in the 50s and 60s. I might clean it up and resell it because it's got all of its jars and everything with it. But you hung this from the ceiling in your workshop and you keep all your all your little miscellaneous nuts and bolts and screws in it. And it kept them up off your bench so you had room. And spin it around to the next one and got to what you needed. Kind of neat. They don't make nothing like that anymore. But paints kind of flaky on it. It could be painted. I mean, it's not, there's nothing but the color that says it needs to stay that. But I'm dumping garbage all over my floor. This was sitting up on the top of a cabinet, so it was covered. But that, oh, well, I almost forgot. I thought I was done, but here I am again. This little box. This little box has got... can't see the brand on it. But it was in super good shape. Well, most people will know what that is, but that's a sharpener for sharpening your razor blades for the early single. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what that is. I may be wrong. That's sure what it looks like, but I don't think that is what it is. I don't know. Here we are. I I think that is what it is. It's just in a different manner. The 
than I've seen before. <laughs> I don't know. That comes out then. Yeah, that's gotta be what that is. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Alright. Hmm. Little pulls out there. Yeah, see, it's got the little notches. I, yeah, that's got to be what that is. Yeah, yeah, it's just one I've never seen before. It's kind of elaborate. May have to look that one up and see what's more about it. Figure out some more about that one. It may have just been nothing. Uh, this was more brass. Just, uh, just some hinges. And the big rectifier that most GM older cars had to help rectify the power. I think that's what it was called. Big transducer ballast resistor. That's what it was. So I grabbed that because I thought it was neat. And last but not least, a box of skeleton keys. Bunch of brass, early brass. Um, I've got a bunch of these still somewhere else. I'm reluctant to list these because the last time I had some on eBay, they bought my antique ones and shipped me back some fake plastic ones and did a return on them. Uh, so, I try not to mess with the keys much. Put them in a pile and I'll, I might throw them out on whatnot on one of my future whatnot auctions. But, alright, well that's what it, you end up finding after about four hours of digging through a mouse and rat and animal infested estate. I uh, found some cool stuff. No big price, but I've not got nothing into this. Uh, there was a grandfather clock I ended up getting dirt cheap because the animals had chewed it up around the bottom. I'll end up pulling the movement out of that and probably selling it separate. Uh, but this is what I ended up with. Like I say, there may be a future antique vintage tool auction going on and whatnot. I'm thinking about it. Got to get our first one under our belt first, and that's coming very soon. So stay tuned. You will see that there'll be a little, <coughs> excuse me, there'll be a preview video that I'll put out on YouTube right before, about a week before, uh, so everybody gets to see what I'm gonna have. Uh, but other than that, I'm Jarvis. This is It's Not Junk TV. I really appreciate you stopping by, and until the next one, take care.